In this lesson, we'll go through two examples discussing the effect of a concentration change on equilibrium. Question one reads, consider the following reaction at equilibrium. What is the effect of adding additional CO2 to the reaction mixture? What is the effect of adding additional CaCO3? Notice that CO2, carbon dioxide, is a gas. Adding an additional gas, in this case CO2, increases the concentration of CO2 and causes the reaction to shift to the left. Adding additional calcium carbonate, CaCO3, however, does not increase the concentration of CaCO3 because it's a solid and therefore has a constant concentration. For this reason, adding additional CaCO3 has no effect on the position of the equilibrium. And just to recall, this is the reason why solids are not included in the equilibrium expression when it's written. In the next example, we're asked, consider the following reaction at equilibrium. What is the effect of adding additional bromine gas to the reaction mixture? And what is the effect of adding additional BrNO? As mentioned in question number one, bromine is a gas. So by applying more bromine gas to this reaction, it will shift to the left. It will increase the concentration of Br2. And unlike in question number one, BrNO is a gas, so it will push the reaction forward to the right. And of course, you can always confirm this by calculating the reaction quotient Q and placing hypothetical numbers in for their concentrations. The reaction quotient QC for this reaction is shown right here. And just think of it this way. If I were to apply a number in for Br2, setting all of them equal to one if you like, to begin with. If I were to increase Br2, Qc would get higher. And if Qc is larger than K, the reaction goes to the left. By making this number larger, the number in the denominator of this fraction, it makes Qc smaller. And when Qc is smaller than Kc, the reaction proceeds to the right. That is how to tell the effect of a concentration change on a reaction that's at equilibrium.